Good evening and welcome to our board meeting this evening where our pledge is going to be led by some of our students. Thanks, friends. I'm at this point, we would like to call the meeting to order. Mrs. Perry? Dr. McBride? Here. Mr. Williams? Here. Dr. Gase? Here. Mr. Kisabeth? Here. Mr. Perez? Here. Next, we would like to entertain a motion to adopt the agenda. Mrs. Perry, are there any corrections or additions? None. Thank you. We'll entertain a motion. So moved. Thank you. Second. Mrs. Perry? Dr. Gase? Yes. Mr. Kizabeth? Yes. Mr. Perez? Yes. Mr. Williams? Yes. Dr. McBride? Yes. That brings us up to presentations, and I'll let Mr. Richards lead us through those. I'm just going to start by having Mrs. Miller, principal at Washington Elementary, introduce our special friends today for their special presentation. Let's try that again. Um, I have a loud voice, but maybe not that loud. So good evening. Tiffin City School students benefit every day from the leadership and vision of our school board. This month is School Board Recognition Month, so Washington wanted to take some time to thank these, to thank these dedicated school leaders. I have brought some special first grade guests from Washington to share their thanks. Each of the students has written their own sentiment. All right. Our first speaker is Zach Hermiller. Thank you for making our schools better. Our next speaker is Elliot Hoida. Thank you for helping our schools. Next speaker is Morgan Weininger. Thank you for giving your time for Tiffin City Schools. Oliver Moyer. Thank you for keeping our schools clean. Landon Abel. Thank you for finding the best Tiffin City School. What? Thank, you. Thank you for finding the best people to work at Tiffin City School. Oh. We could just that. So. So thank you. Say it again. Thank you for finding finding the best people people to work to work at Tiffin City Schools. There you go. Good job. Up oh, and Amelia Best. Thank you for. Thank you for keeping our school safe. Whoops. Let's move the microphone. Um, so we have also brought you some gifts. They are tornado cutting boards because as a board, you are a cut above the rest. So happy board appreciation. Let's go back to Mr. Kisabeth. Remember Dr. Hills? Okay. Mr. Williams, you want to learn? Mr. Perez, remember that one? Remember we were going? Dr. McBride, smack dab in the middle. You guys are both going smack dab in the middle. Same person. The lady, the lady with the glasses. Okay, thank you. Mr. Williams, he's got the beard. Beard? And Mr. Practiced. 
Mrs. Miller and all of your students and all of the parents, thank you all so much for your, your thoughtfulness and for bringing so much joy this evening. Also, we recognize that the rest of the board meeting isn't super exciting for your students, so please don't feel obliged to stay. Uh, thank you all. Mr. Richards. At this time, I'm gonna introduce uh, Ms. Judy Downey to come up to the podium to talk about Kraut Outdoor Learning Area and the grant that she received for that. Hello, hello, good evening. Um, it's a really hard act to follow, but <laughs> hey, I, I just wanted to bring and just finalize our wonderful, beautiful crowd outdoor learning area is complete. It's up and running. It's a little cold right now to be out there, but we've already used it for quite a few lessons. Just gave you some photographs of it and thought you'd enjoy looking and seeing how it turned out. And it's all done. So thank you very much for your support. I appreciate it. Have a good night. Thank you, Mrs. Downey. And now for the next topic, if uh, Mrs. Brenda Luring would like to come up to talk to the board about a presentation for the regretful super, uh, treasure search uh, for Mrs. Perry with her impending retirement. So uh, Ms. Luring and I were able to talk, uh, talk a few days ago. And so a presentation that some of the board has already seen, but she's adapted that presentation with some of the feedback that we've received. Hey, there's an on-off button. Nifty. Um, it's really strange to stand clear over here. I want to like come right up to you guys. So, um, and I don't stand still very well. But um, I am pleased to present um, that we at the NCOESC would be more than honored to do the search for you and the board um, for your treasure, for your next treasure. Um, Sharon is definitely going to be a tough act to follow. And uh, we are going to do our very best to ensure that we get you the best quality candidate that you want as a board. So what I would like to do just quickly is um, I did, um, once again, there is a packet of information for the board to look at, um, including what it would look like for the information to go out and announce the treasurer search. It also gives the information about the community of Tiffin, the vacancy itself, district information, and I believe that anything that um, was questioned has been changed and we can continue to change it up until the moment we send it out. So if you have any additional changes you want to see, we can put that in there. Um, third page of that, announce, of that announcement um, would be the qualifications the board, tentative timeline, application process, et cetera. So that's what you would have with your first on the right side of the handout, or of the, um, yes, the handout. Um, on the left side, you will see the treasures search timeline. And um, it is um, somewhat aggressive. Um, I think it's important to be aggressive um, in the search for a treasure. Treasures are hard to come by right now in the state of Ohio. So when we announce a search and knowing that there's multiple other searches out there, we want to get the very best candidate. And what we want to do is make sure that if a, a person is seeking to be out um, looking for a treasurer's position, we get out there in front of many other districts. So um, if you look at the timeline today, you will see that on there January 23rd. If all is set, with all of the information that you see, uh, see in this um, packet or this uh, sheet and the two, three sheets right there, we can go ahead and we can start to push out this information across the state of Ohio as early as tomorrow. Um, and I will wait for the board's approval and through uh, your superintendent, Mr. Richards. And uh, once he gives the green light, after you give him the green light, we'll go ahead and we'll get that started immediately. Um, looking through what we would do then is, of course, we post the position statewide. Uh, we post the application online through your website, our website, social media. We will do a press release and we will begin the recruitment process. 
Um, the next thing you will see on there, the February 10th, is that would be the deadline. That's a Friday, February 10th. And that's a pretty, it's, it's a good window of time for people to see the posting, talk with anybody they need to talk with, and then apply. Um, after that, then what we would do is between the week or between in the week of February 13th through 17th, sometime in that week, would meet with the board to review the candidates. You will have every candidate um, and all of the information that they provide us. And we will go through each candidate and then you will, as a board, determine who you would like to interview and do initial interview. We will then go ahead and schedule them for you. If all goes well and we have multiple candidates that we are interested in, we will then begin that uh, interview process the week of February through 20th through 24th. So you will conduct your initial interviews. Um, we will actually, well, we'll determine um, once, de determine how many you wanna interview, then we'll conduct those interviews. After the first round, you will determine who you would like to bring back for the second round. Um, and then we will do the background reference checks, which actually we'll probably do before that, but making sure that we step by step through the process of every single candidate that you want to bring back and um, that we look at everything that we can and get all of the information we can about those candidates. Um, the week of February 27th through March 10th, um, the weeks, I say, is because then that is where you will interview and then the board will select the candidate that they are interested in offering the position. Hopefully, hopefully that process is goes very smooth and you find that perfect candidate. And then if all else goes well, the board will meet to hire um, uh, in the month of March. And then, of course, we will take care of sending out the other letters to the other candidates. Any questions right now for me? So what would then the timeline look like if we don't have a good return on applicants or we don't then find an applicant that is the right fit? Okay, so what I would suggest then is if we get to that process in um, toward the end of February and we do not have the candidates that we want, um, I'm not as concerned of quantity as I am quality. Um, we could have 30 people apply and that looks great, but if they're not of good quality, that's a concern. I would rather have two or three candidates apply that are great quality. So I'm not, like I said, not concerned with quantity, but quality. But if we get to that time frame, I would then suggest that we get together and meet again and we determine a plan of action. Um, and that could be anything from reopening the search and casting a bigger net um, further out or um, discuss uh, even, and I know that you, I really would hope that we don't have to go this way, but you, if possible, and you would have to go with an interim superintendent for a bit, you could, or superintendent, sorry, I'm used to that. <laughs> Sorry, Ben. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> treasure, interim treasure for a bit. Um, yeah. <laughs> then um, we could look at that and we could see what that looked like too. But um, really, I hope that um, we, um, I mean, Tiffin is a great, great district. And I think that you're going to have some quality candidates want to apply and be here. I think it's going to be up to you as to find those, you know, those top quality, which one you really want to sift through and select. But I don't think you'll have trouble with the quality. And I hope I don't have to, you know, take my words back there. But any other questions for me at this time? Uh, I just have one um, question. Just to clarify for the public, it's not like we can just advertise and you can be a financial person, you actually have to have a license to qualify for this position. So I think people have to understand that there's licensing requirements that are involved here as well for us. Absolutely. You must have a bachelor's degree in business 
or another area and then you must be able to you have to take the coursework and then apply for your treasurer's license through the state of ohio and you must be licensed as a treasurer in order to be a school treasurer in the state of ohio so it does come with qualifications it can't just be um someone that decides that they want to switch from um, a financial position in a um, regular business there is requirements that uh, come along with this and our posting does show that you either have to have your current treasurer's license or the ability to obtain one be in that process etc you know what i need to double check on the ability to obtain one i believe that my last look today was that uh to have the license it says, it says I, or ability to obtain. Okay, thank you. Um, also, just can you share and clarify um, in the February 20th week, it says that reference checks and background checks will be done by NCOESC. Can you share what that process looks like? Absolutely. Um, so everyone um, in the state of Ohio that is an educator or works in an educator uh, or an education setting must have background checks, FBI and BCI. So of course we will do that. And also we ask for reference letters from the candidates. Of course we check those, however we go further. We will call um, previous uh, employment areas and, and um, employers that they have been associated with. We will then also talk with different people in different, uh, if they come outside of a, from a different community, um, different community leaders, if that's the case, and other people to make sure that um, we're looking at that top quality candidate. Not only do they have the necessary skills, but they also have the ethics and the morals that you want in Tiffin City. In Tiffin City. Any other questions for Ms. Loring? Would we like to go ahead and set a date for that February 13th week? Uh, a pretty active board, so I know that their schedules fill up quickly. Do you have your calendar with you? You know what? Set a time, I'll make it work. So board members, that is. Mr. Richards, um, since she's asking about dates at this point, can I move? I know it's out of the agenda order, but 701 to approve that? Because I, th I believe if we're setting dates, it implies that we're already approved a contract. So mm. can we do this? Is it possible if we just use Mrs. Spar to email all the board members to work yep. on a date later on to find a commonality yep. that we can do that? Yep. Okay. Any other questions for Mrs. Loring? If you um, do vote and select us to be the, uh, to do the search, I once again I put in some potential questions in the packet also, and also questions that you cannot legally ask. Um, what I would ask for the next step, and when we get together, if we get together the next time um, before the interview process, look over those questions, and if there are questions that you have that you don't see listed and you want as part of the interview process, please let me know, and we'll make sure that they're in those, uh, the interview questions so that you have that and we're all ready to go. Okay, thank you thank so you. much. Ms. Richards. For our next topic, I'm gonna to have Mr. Alvarado, our high school principal at Tiffin Columbian High School come up. Uh, one of the issues that he and I had looked at shortly upon him being hired, uh, and maybe some of you have had this experience as parents, is my understanding is that there are times where we have to move graduation date, or we have to limit uh, the amount of people that a graduate can be able to bring in. And so Mr. Alvarado has been looking to examine that and, and would like to just come, nothing for any board action today, but for a discussion and to get feedback on. But uh, he's, he's found an option that I think would be a pretty solid option for us. Good evening. Um, as we came back from Christmas break and started the second semester, um, started thinking, Okay, second semester tends to go a little bit quicker than the first semester. What events do we have coming up? And I wanted to make sure that we plan for them accordingly. And what, there is no bigger event than graduation. So I, I started 
doing some some research and talking to some of the secretaries about what graduation looks like at Columbian. Uh, again, it's been 20 years since I was here, so I just wanted to become familiar with that again. And what I found was that graduation has always been held at the stadium, okay? However, um, if weather warranted it, um, there were rain dates established. And which, as you could probably imagine, could wreak havoc on family plans uh, and, and whatnot. So then I found that it was established that if, if the weather was bad, that the graduation was moved to the gymnasium at the high school. And then there were gold tickets and there were blue tickets. Gold tickets meant that you got to watch the ceremony from inside the gymnasium, and blue tickets meant that you would go to the auditorium and watch a live feed of the ceremony. And I, I was told that uh, sometimes technology wasn't always the best. Um, it was inside, so it was very hot, and it, it caused a lot of confusion. So I thought, okay, what, what, is, is there other options? Just wondering. And I thought, well, we have Tiffany University and we have the Heminger Center. So I thought, well, I, I'll call them and just get some information, bring it back to Mr. Richards and the board and, and see what they have to offer for us. So I met along with uh, two of our secretaries. I met with Tiffany University at the Heminger Center. We walked through it, looked at the entire um, venue, um, seating would not be an issue. They could accommodate as many as we um, anticipated. Uh, air conditioning, and I thought, okay, that would eliminate um, a lot of things, the blue and gold tickets. Uh, parents, students having to determine who gets a blue or gold ticket. There was enough room in there for everybody, and like I said, it's air conditioned. Um, they were going to give us a, a pretty, a pretty uh, nice discount. Um, so the idea then evolved into, okay, we continue to have graduation at the stadium, and then our backup plan, our insurance policy would be if the weather was bad, we could have it at the Heminger Center, and we could keep the same date, the same time, the only thing we would have to do is get it out to the community parents that it's gonna be moved to the Heming Center because of weather. And again, there would be no blue or gold tickets. It could accommodate everybody, air condition. Um, the students at TU are not in session any longer. Um, so parking would be there. We could even get uh, golf carts and, and shuttle people back and forth. So that was the idea. That's a thought. That's what I'm bringing to you um, for any thoughts or ideas. I, I just wanted to start having these conversations sooner than later. Because like I said, second semester tends to go a little bit quicker, and I didn't want to be scrambling at the end. But again, the idea is first and foremost, it being at Columbian Stadium, and then if weather was not good, we would move to the Hemier Center. Well, and the idea, I think, it makes great sense because we, of course, want to be here. We want to be in the stadium. Yeah. We want to be, we you know, follow that tradition and, and have all the families come here. Yeah. But also, e each year, it's a tricky thing. Like, it could be on this date or one of these following three days. And if you have people traveling or all of those pieces, right. or even worse, you have to leave family members out who can't be present. And just having the option that we prefer it to be here, but you don't have to rearrange graduation parties, travel, and everybody can exactly. attend. I think having that option just kind of eases all of those those worries. Wasn't this past year, wasn't there a, a threat of weather? And I think we all kind of were waiting till the very, like, it wasn't like an hour before we were finally able to make the call that graduation would go, would proceed? Okay. I think we actually had two or three dates last year, and then we go on the third date, then it ended up on the Sunday. Yeah, uh, I can give you a little perspective on that too. Um, last year was the first uh, I think we've ever changed the date. Uh, we have changed the site within 30 minutes with thunderstorms and water coming over the curbs and 
all kinds of stuff. And I can also tell you that one year we had to make up two weeks of school because of snow and inclement weather. And I personally worked with the senior class to keep the date where it was. We had graduation on the date that we said we we're gonna have it. We gave out blank diplomas and the kids had to come back for two weeks of school. I don't think you can do that every year. We were able to pull it off once, but I'm not sure you wanna to continue to do that. But I also agree, and the reason we did it then, because we did not wanna change graduation date right. for all the parties and all the travel arrangements, because quite frankly, we have relation that lives across the country. And so when you're starting to make airfare and that type of thing, I think it's important to keep the date set. However, are you going to completely do away with tickets? Um, the idea there is we do hometown ticketing for our tournaments. So tickets would still need to be purchased. And I say that purchase, what we would do is use hometown ticketing. Um, parents would go to the website, put down how many tickets they would need. Okay. And we're only going to ask that you, um, request the number of tickets that you actually need. We're not gonna put a limit on it. And then they would get the, the QR codes. And at the bottom, their total will be $0. And the reason for that is when they come in, we would still scan the QR codes. That gives us a better idea of how to plan in the future, how many people showed up for graduation, how many tickets did we sell, but not scan and, and so on. And that'll give us a better idea for future planning. So to answer your question, yes, uh, of course, no charge, but we would use the electronic ticketing. I, I think that's a good idea because I think it gives you a little bit of security so that you don't have just anybody trying to right. walk in. Uh, right. So I think that security yep. is important. And then, Madam President, Dr. Gates, I think you were the last one that got to join the gym graduation and it was extremely hot in there. I, th that's all the families talked about. And then on top of that, that's the auditorium that did not broadcast. And so we had people that were doubly angry at that point. And they did ask that question, can you use the Heminger at that point? And then last year we did the multiple times. And I remember there were some athletes that were like hoping that it did get moved because they had the track, I think regionals at the same time qualifier. So, but I think again, we do have lots of people that come from out of county and they've asked before, have we ever considered using Heminger? So in terms of the discounted rate, I'd say thank you to them. TU has been you know, a good partner to work with. So is Heidelberg, but TU also hosted the STEM fair for us, I think a couple weeks ago. So I think it's good that we have that relationship and I'd like to commend you and the staff for thinking forward this year. I, I will say this about the, the, the TU staff. Um, when we started talking about numbers, um, that they said, we would just, we'll, we'll give it to you. And I thought, you know, being my first year here back, I'm not sure of the relationships that we have with them as far as they're using our stadium for lacrosse, football, and, and, and I'm not sure of all those agreements that have been made. So I had asked, I said, no, no, just I, I'd like to know how much you would charge us for it without that. And um, they did send me a, a contract, and, and I will say um, it is $1,000 to rent that. And actually, it would be for Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, because they would start setting it up on Thursday. We would have graduation practice, I imagine, at both locations if we were to do this. So it would be set up, and they have a stage there. So um, I, I would say that. I, I think the, to, to echo Mr. Press's points, the, the partnership that we have with, with yes. TU and the, the insurance policy that this provides us, our families, the community, our students, that is a, a, a very generous and kind yep. cost. I agree. So let me get this straight. They're going to set up as though it's going to happen. We would have to. Yeah, right. So, I mean, we would have to. They were going to do that for nothing? Well, no, no. I did make an agreement no, I mean, are we, that... Are we going to be the ones setting it up, or are they going to be? Yeah, we, we would assist them in setting okay. it up. So, uh, obviously, I thought football team, whatever student groups that we have sure. assisting, yeah. 
But and you that, are correct. And that's not any different than if we have it at it, Tiffin yeah. State Schools because we're going to sit up at the stadium and we're going to put all the chairs in the, in the, gymnasium. In the gymnasium anyway. Yes. Yes, so. Thank I, you for arranging that. Yeah. I think the protocol for this with other districts that have had a an alternate location for graduation is that we need to establish a, a certain time where we will make a decision by to make certain that uh, to take care of Mr. Kisbeth's issue where we're not moving people 30 minutes prior to something is that we would make a decision at a specified time and tell parents, if we have to move it, you will be notified at this time um, that we're going to move to the alternate location just so everybody has time and, and, and can make those plans and we can work uh, accordingly. And to be honest with you, I'm also being told that typically we start sending out information about graduation beginning of February. So just to, to put that on the parents' calendar, so. But yeah. I would I like to join the board in thanking Mr. Alvarado for looking ahead and being proactive with his staff and, and working on making partnerships within the community. Uh, so thank you very much, Mr. Alvarado. Thank you to all of our presenters tonight. This brings us up to our reports for the evening, and this will start with Dr. Gase. So the uh, Business uh, Advisory Council met on uh, January 19th, uh, right at Tiffin Columbian High School cafeteria. And um, we uh, uh, discussed a, a number of things. Um, there were, um, youth science was a, a big topic and uh, Jen uh, Kuhn, uh, or actually um, uh, Jennifer Musgrave gave us the uh, presentation there. And um, some of the things that were, I found very interesting. First of all, youth science is, is a, um, it's a, it's a um, an assessment tool that um, helps people, uh, our high school students, uh, determine their aptitude and also interests in uh, career uh, goals. Uh, some of the things I thought were interesting was that um, uh, there's a, a, a wide disparity between uh, certain uh, clusters, they call them, such as advanced manufacturing, agriculture, natural resources, uh, computers and technology, and health sciences. Uh, that is, um, uh, a high aptitude to interest ratio. So in other words, a lot of people were, um, had aptitude but no interest in those fields. Uh, and, and conversely, uh, human resources or human services, uh, law and public safety, and uh, sales marketing and, and um, teaching all had uh, uh, higher interest than aptitude. So their, their ratios were you know, considerably less than one. So I thought that was really interesting. It, um, and I, I suspect a lot of it has to do with uh, just lack of experience, lack of, uh, you know, exposure. So, so that would um, prompt us, I believe, at some point in time to try to uh, encourage some of our local businesses uh, to provide, you know, shadowing experiences and our, our students uh, almost, I suppose, I always say they have to almost be kicked into it, pushed into it, so that they, uh, they, they have an idea that they wouldn't have otherwise done or, you know, sometimes... Uh, Parents, if they're like me, my parents, uh, you know, we got pushed into things that you may not have really wanted to do, but you did anyway. Um, Carol Owen announced that um, Senator Sher Brown is hosting a statewide summer uh, manufacturing camp summit uh, uh, for grades four through eight. Um, it's for uh, to help young people learn about manufacturing careers <clears throat> and uh, interest in STEM. Uh, Carol Owen would be uh, uh, attend if there's an interest in somebody going. Uh, the Seneca County Teachers Boot Camp uh, is being developed by NCOESC, and the target date is a week of June 5th. Currently, five businesses are involved. Um, we have speakers. Uh, we're trying to get speakers uh, to establish for the middle school program, um, uh, career, career speakers for that program. Our subcommittees reported uh, uh, career committee has a job fair April 19th for full-time, part-time, and seasonal workers. Uh, Success Skills Job Readiness Committee was, is presently working with the Heidelberg students, uh, a group of students that are going to provide uh, some um, mentoring uh, to middle school students. Uh, we have the Money Management uh, Committee uh, advise us that, um, uh, is it? What's, what bank is that? Um, Krogan, yeah, Krogan uh, is, is providing the um, uh, Banzai, B-A-N-Z-A-I, 
uh, their their little uh, um, units for uh, many uh, uh, economic ventures, if you will, and the, the, the broad list of uh, opportunities, and they are providing it um, for Tiffin City School uh, students uh, free of charge. Um, yeah, let's see. And um, Jen Kuhn presented on Tornado Academy. And um, National Machinery uh, scholarships are available. Um, and if uh, any interest in that, one of the uh, uh, board members can uh, inform of that. Next meeting is February 16th to be held right here at Tiffin Middle School. Thank you, Dr. Gase. Could yeah. I yes, add to that? Uh, I'm, I'm part of that committee as well. And I'll go back to what Dr. Gase talked about the youth science. This is the thing that our high school kid, students, as part of their assignment on the two days when the teachers had in service prior to Thanksgiving, we had 597 students report to data on this sheet. And it's great between the aptitude and the interest because this gives our guidance people some real meat to work with students to help get the interest where the aptitude is. So I think this is going to be a very good tool for our guidance department to use along with our students. And as we're talking about partnerships, um, the board is probably privy to this, but I was looking at purchasing this for our district moving forward. And through some connections, uh, I was told, hey, hold off on that. I think someone else is going to be doing it. Sentinel Vanguard has actually paid for all the schools in the county to be able to take this. So this was actually now done for the students at Tiffin City Schools. And as both of you have alluded, we get this great data to be able to help us. And it all came at no charge to our actual school district. Uh, Sentinel Vanguard did that. Um, I have a question about that. Um, I know there was a, the students didn't immediately get the results. Um, I know we wanted to explain to them what the results meant rather than just giving them the results. Have they received the results of that yet? Yes, the students have the results of their survey. They should. If, if they haven't, make sure to talk to a, a counselor at the high school. Um, I, I know one sophomore student that definitely received their results. Um, so I'm positive, and that was a topic all during uh, uh, the past little bit here. So uh, I do know it, it occurred before winter break, and it was a conversation, not just in our home, but also with grandparents uh, during that time. So I do know those results are out. If, you, if the student hasn't received it, make sure you get a hold of probably Mrs. Musgrave at the high school, and we can make sure we take care of that. I'm just saying maybe sometimes teenagers aren't forthcoming. It was, a, it was a hot conversation at, at a dinner table in my home, for sure. So I know those results are out. <laughs> Absolutely. But they're not always forthcoming. So, Mr. Richards, I just have, and I don't want to veer off the committee here, but were there, like, any f findings or f results that surprised you or that, like, just... No, I, I think Dr. Gase hit it upon it really well. I think any time where you see discrepancies between either high aptitude but low interest or high interest and low aptitude, those are those are issues to kind of take a look at and kind of go, hmm, I wonder why that is. Uh, but I think this is a baseline now for us on what we're looking at with a group of students. I think what will be more intriguing is perpetuating this year after year and seeing how those survey results change. Um, is that based upon other initiatives that we're doing? For example, I would sincerely hope, I'll just pick one, that if there's a... Uh, if we start trying to give a lot of high interest areas in engineering, I would hope that there would be more students that would show a higher interest in engineering. Um, I, I would hope if we're doing a lot of uh, interest-based uh, moments like that, that we'd, we'd see the results of that in our data. Um, so I think this gives us a great baseline to say, uh, this is where we are right now. This is where our kids are right now. It isn't where they need to be. Uh, or where they must be, uh, and, and just to make certain that parents are looking at it, and yet again, uh, maybe for some of you up here, you had similar conversations in your dinner tables. Um, that doesn't mean you have to do any one of those jobs. Uh, that does not mean you are locked in and you can only choose among the jobs that are listed per you science. Uh, that is not what it means, but it's supposed to be a good indication uh, of, of where a computer that has some scientific backing to it as a, for a formula, 
uh, that it has an algorithm to say these are the ones that we think might be really good for you. Um, not saying it, not calling out any specific student, but if there were 15 job possibilities and 14 of them were all within one vein and one of them was outside of that vein, it doesn't mean that you have to go do that one job. Uh, maybe the 14 that are in that same vein are probably a better, uh, more closely aligned with where you wanna be. Uh, but it is also talking about aptitude and interest. Uh, so I think, I think this just gives us, and, and, and Mr. Kissabeth and Dr. Gase, I think, said it very well, is that it, it gives us a great place to start. And I think it's a great place as we're talking to our business advisory groups. And I think there's a reason that Sentinel Vanguard was very interested in helping all the schools in the county. I think it allows us to better align uh, and provide services to meet kids with where they are and where they'd like to be. Uh, so I don't know if I have any massive takeaways other than this is where our kids are as of this year. And we'll, it'd be interesting to see how this changes in subsequent years. As Mr. Kisbeth said, there were 597 students total. And really, the, 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 of course, the seniors were probably were the smallest group, but it was pretty good uh, uh, division of, of uh, every freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior class. And uh, as far as gender, it's pretty equal, too. So it was a good sampling of the entire um, classes, I suspect. I'd also like to give Mr. Alvarado some credit. So not too shabby for having such a high, uh, high ratio of students completed on our remote learning days. I, I know maybe there was some trepidation about would, would students actually do work on those remote learning days? Uh, the answer is they did. And so congratulations to you. I don't know what all methods you use to cajole, um, intimidate, bribe the kids to do that, but you, you did it at a really high ratio to give our kids uh, better feedback and so we can better provide help for them. Thank you all. This brings us up to Finance Committee with Mr. Williams. Yep. Um, so this is my first time as the, the chair of the committee. I've, I've attended it for you know, on and off for the last year and a half. Um, so I wanna just take a second and, and talk about what the, the committee does. Um, we, we typically start out like most, most of our meetings, we, we review the minutes uh, from the previous month. And then the treasurer, Mrs. Perry, gives us a, a summary of kind of where we are in certain accounts, right? There's a, a lot of accounts that we have to go through. Some of them are used for very specific things. So we, we cover that and, and any anomalies that, that show up, she covers and, and gives some, some rationale behind. Um, let me go over um, the, uh, the financial summary, which is kind of a balances of certain things. We look at things that are, are kind of grouped uh, at a slightly higher level. Uh, we talk about where the, the funds are spent in terms of percentage. Um, for instance, we're about 50% of the way through the school year, or sorry, through the fiscal year. Uh, so not every account is at 50% right now. Some of them are higher and some are lower. Uh, some spending in some of those accounts happens more at the beginning of the school year, uh, sorry, the fiscal year, and some happen at the end. So you have different different percentages and we gain insight into that. Uh, and then we, we go over um, the, essentially the, it's called the disbursement summary. So it's, it's the check register, right? So we look at where we've spent money. Um, we go over that and, you know, we get any questions about that clarified. Um, so that's kind of how the, uh, the meetings typically go. Um, and there wasn't a whole lot this month. Uh, we did go over the alternative tax budget information that we uh, voted on at the organizational meeting, I believe. Uh, so we went over that and there's some, uh, some visuals that have been developing in the, in the committee. Um, that I think eventually want to bring as part of the report that we submit. Um, they, they give, um, it's a higher level summary. Again, it's a visual, some charts that go over the, the numbers, right? We, we often look at the, the five-year forecast and it's a spreadsheet and, and there's a lot of numbers on it. Um, but, uh, but these sort of give, uh, an overtime view of the, the finance of the district. So I think in the future, we'll, we'll get some of those integrated into what we show here for that committee. But, um. Again, that, that's my summary. I don't know if Mrs. Perry has anything to add. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Next, that brings us to support services with Mr. Kizabeth. The support services did not meet in January. Uh, we were supposed to meet on January 13th. That meeting uh, was canceled. Our next meeting will be Friday, February 10th at 8 a.m. in the administration building. Thank you. Over to Mr. Perez with Policy, Governance, and Records Committee. We also did not meet. I think we followed the organizational meeting, so we look at meeting at the first Thursday of the month, correct? So that'll be my first. And 
luckily I have Dustin with me to help me on that. And you can just roll into the next one. Legislative liaison. I know there's legislation that's been introduced, but I'm going to hold off on reporting on it until next month because I think right now we're going to see what happens with the leadership in the House. Um, and then two, to see where their priorities are. I think they're saying right now their priority is the budget. And so seeing it, it has to be done shortly and I think in the next two months and that's going to be really important to us to see what direction that takes. Thank you. Next is myself with the student achievement liaison and really similar to Mr. Williams and finance. This is my first time serving in this role and the initial um, information that came out is really on what the role is as the student achievement liaison. And so those things just to recap are to share with fellow board members on a monthly basis information about ways to improve student success and promote student achievement within the district to encourage school board colleagues to keep student achievement at the forefront of board action and to participate in SALT activities such as summer regional meetings and capital conference events, encouraging other board members to do so as well. And I will continue to update the board and the district with those pieces as they come out. And then that brings us over to Mr. Richards and his superintendent's advisory committee. Yes, we're getting ready to have our first meeting on Monday night of the superintendent advisory committee. I'm very excited to get that going. Uh, be able to start getting some feedback and some discussions. In fact, for the members of the committee that are on that, including our community members and our students that are gonna be on that, uh, they were just emailed today some homework assignments. Why? Because I'm an educator and sometimes we have to give homework. Uh, so I I'm excited about that. Uh, moving forward, uh, Mr. Williams, if it's okay at this point, um, Mr. Williams has a conflict with the dates uh, that have already been chosen. And I know last time he was excited to be a part of that, but it's just not gonna work for his calendar with previous engagements. So it would be up to the board uh, if, and yet again, it's not a, an official act, just feedback and you guys talking about is what does it because it's a superintendent group, not a, not a board group. But um, if there is a board member that would like to be on it, if we want Mr. Kisabeth on it and he can simply represent the board, or if there is another person that wanted to be a part of it, but I, I'd let the, board at this time provide feedback on that. Is that a one-time thing for you or is it? No, uh, the class I teach at Ohio State is Monday and Wednesday evenings. Oh, and all of these okay. committee meetings are on, uh, Monday are on Mondays. Right, and, and you know, I think as part of the, the invitation that you know, went out <laughs> to the community, it was, it, it's a commitment, right? I think Mr. Richards is wanting, if you're on the committee, you're on the committee, right? And you know, being able to make it every once in a while wouldn't, wouldn't sure. meet that standard, right? So I want to make sure that at least as a board member, I'm yeah. I'm setting that. Right. So what time is that? Six thirty to eight thirty. On Mondays. It's it's on Mondays. Um, Mrs. Spar, do is you have the first and third yeah. Mondays? Because we're yes. the fourth Monday. Yes. I could. Um, yeah, I can. Yes, Mrs. Spar, do you have the dates? Victor. You uh, Victor interested? Oh, there, then go ahead, Victor. Yeah. No, no. If you're if you're interested, be January thirtieth, February thirteenth. Oh, happily. February 27th, and then two dates in March. I, 6th and 20th. So, yeah, I can't put three on. That That's a problem, but uh, but but Mr. we can Perry, have two. Are you able to attend those? those you meetings? guys can thumb wrestle or something. Well, and Mr. President had had interest in that, and he stepped back to, to let both um, Larry and Dustin do that. So as long as you're able to commit to those evenings, if you're okay with that, I think it would be fair that it goes to you. Oh. Okay. So I'm very excited about that. Our next, our next items are over to you as well, Mr. Richards. Okay. So last month I presented the restructuring plan uh, for our district, and I do appreciate the feedback that I've had. Uh, a lot of a lot of feedback from staff and from a few community members. Uh, I think there's still some wait and see approach that some people have about a number of things, um, and I don't mind saying that I, I've, the feedback I've heard a, a few times is that this sounds good. We've heard stuff like this in the past, um, but we want to be able to see if we move forward on it. Um, and and I, I think that's fair. Uh, as the board knows, I am committed to this um, and seeing it through. And there's going to be a few issues on our agenda today uh, that we would need to execute to start moving on parts of this. But there are parts of it that will take some time. Um, and there are parts of it that need to get rolled into things. So one of the parts that I have heard 
a little bit of mixed feedback on, uh, positive and negative, is, is wondering about what to do with the fort. Uh, some people said, we like that idea. Some people said, eh, I don't know what we think about that. Uh, from where we are timeline-wise, it would not be, able, it's not possible to pull that off for the beginning of the next year. Uh, so working with TDA, I think the most prudent thing to do is to actually fold in the conversation about that facility in with our other facility uh, uh, conversations that are gonna start taking place a week from tonight. Uh, so we can just fold that into, into there. And some of the things might take a little bit more time to achieve. And, and I think we have to be cognizant and, and flexible, um, which is um, not always my best quality, but it's something that I'm going to be working on uh, to make sure we're adaptable to be able to change and roll with those times. But uh, so far, most of the feedback that I've received has been very, very positive. Um, the word is been ambitious. Uh, I've heard that word used a few times, and I've heard a few people say, we're going to see if, if you can really get this all done. But they, most people that I've talked to said we'd be really excited to see a lot of these things come to fruition. So before I move on, I'd, does anybody have any questions or any comments that they've heard or want to be able to share with me about that? Yeah. Um, uh, everything I've heard has been pretty much positive. Um, you know, I think there was a, a question I had about when does the board vote on it? Right. It. Right. Um, and I, I don't think that we vote on it. Right. It's not our plan. It's it's your plan that you're building around the, some of the guidance we've given you about where to take the district there. I think there's certain elements on there that you do require us to vote on because there, there are certain changes. I think one of them might be in the agenda tonight. Right. So um, so I think that was that was an interesting note. Right. It's it's not something that we it's not the board's plan. Right. It's it's the plan that we've, of course, talked to you about and that we gave feedback on and that we that we that we back right but we don't vote on that plan as a whole right? correct and so th there is no official vote on that um and and when we're always looking for feedback uh the best example i can give is on the on the presentation that was made in january uh, i had i was meeting with a staff at washington elementary and they were talking about, well, we really think that we need to ensure that all staff is CPR trained uh, because that was shortly after DeMar Hamilton um, uh, fell on, on, the, on the football field uh, with a cardiac issue. And they said, we, we feel like we need to have this. I, and very few people will probably know that there was a distinction there. That was not on the original draft I gave you guys, but it was in the draft that was presented in front of the board and is on our website right now is to make certain that all of our staff is CPR certified. So I think, Mr. Williams, to that point, it is a living, breathing document. Um, and some of the things, we might add some things because we think, oh, this is important and we need to add that. Just like the CPR thing, I thought was very timely and, and very apropos. And I appreciated that our teachers shared that feedback of something that they thought they needed to be able to provide better support and better care for students. Uh, so this is a living, breathing document. It is aspirational. And some of those things we're gonna to work towards very quickly, but other things, it might take us a little bit more time. Uh, but the, the mindset needs to be that we are moving forward for what we think is best for our students. I, I did receive some feedback and I, I shared it with you. I think the concerns from the community is, first of all, before they have concerns, I would direct people to look over the presentation. I think the the link might still be on our web page to read it over it is um and understand that i think it's wholly appropriate that our superintendent coming in gets to structure his staff and his organization from the leadership the way that he thinks that it best serves the district that's what we brought him in to do i think there's maybe some fear that we're just creating administrative no if you look at it it's a realignment restructuring and I think this is something that's been needed for a long time coming in to make sure that everything is functioning properly. And again, as to what you said, we get to approve the bits and parts of it. But at the end of the day, that's what the superintendent, it, we brought him in to run the district to make some changes, but he's the expert in this area. So I received feedback as well. Uh, most of mine was on the Ford. So I am glad to see that that is going to be part of a bigger plan. I think, I think when we look at that building and the location of that building and the way it's used, I think it's important that we look at that as a piece to the bigger puzzle of the entire setup of the school district and specifically uh, if there are any plans to do any building in the future. I think 
that all plays in. So I think that's really important. And adding on to what Mr. Perez talked about, as far as the organizational structure, it's my understanding too that we need to be organized to be most efficient. And I don't believe there are any new spots that people are just being reassigned for the most part. There will be some positions that weren't filled this year. Uh, so when I say no new FT full-time full equivalency. So yeah, there's, if we had X number of bodies last year, it'll be the same X number of bodies moving forward. Now those bodies might be doing different things to your point, right. Mr. Kisabeth, um, but we're trying to move them in such a way that we can make our organization, I think, more, more effective. I think the key is you always, talk, in your interview process, you talked about getting the right people on the bus in the right seats. And for me, it's being in a rowboat and making sure we're all rowing in the same direction. I think both those things are important. And I think this organizational plan will help us do that. Thank you. And then the, the last issue, uh, simply because I, I heard about it a little bit today. So for anybody that is watching, um, School safety is always very important to us. Um, and yes, I'm fully aware of weather forecasts for the upcoming week. Um, and, and students made sure that I was uh, informed today that there were a few districts in and around us, uh, and I do say in us as well, that uh, we're not in session today. Yes, I, I'm aware of that. Uh, my job is to make certain that it is safe for students at Tiffin City Schools to be at school. Uh, my preference is, and I say this unabashedly, um, we want students to be in school, and that's important for us. If we don't have students in school, it is because we believe there is a safety issue that precludes them from being able to be at school safely. So our, our standby is that we always want students to be in the building. Uh, the taxpayers pay us money to educate kids, which we are better able to do when they're with us. Uh, so that's very important to us. We understand that when we cancel school or delay school, that that is an inconvenience to parents and can put them out but we make decisions that are based upon safety. And so we believed it was safe today to have school. We were at school, uh, aside from maybe a few kids slipping, walking to school, um, not at the school parking lot, by the way, or sidewalks. Um, we had everybody that was at school safely today, uh, and that's how we make our decisions. So I know that there are people um, that would like us to make very quick decisions, um, maybe in advance of even notifications. So anybody that was hoping to listen tonight to hear me make any proclamations for Wednesday, they will be sadly disappointed. That is not forthcoming tonight. I know some people hope for that. And will, will we have school on Wednesday? I don't know, but we will make the decisions when the data is presented to us and we will make decisions with safety in mind. But we do also make it with the notion of that we understand that it is important for kids to be at school. Um, that is a balancing act. We will always side with caution, but just so we know, we don't just say let's cancel school because it's the easy decision to make. We know it's important when kids are at school. So, so since you brought the, pro I was, I was, would never brought this up, but since you did, um, could it possibly be that, in fact, it is more dangerous to call school off? The I mean, law of un unintended consequences says that when you call school off, by and large, most car driving high schoolers are pretty unlikely to spend the day at home. They will be doing something on the road. Therefore, there'll be a lot more uh, unintended driving or driving uh, that was otherwise not have occurred. And in fact, maybe if we looked at data, we would find that there's actually more accidents and more injuries on days we call off school. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not aware. I'm not that's, either. Yeah, I'm, that's, I, 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 would have, I would love to have. I would love to have a state yeah. patrolman who might be listening to to say, "Hey, we can talk uh, to them." Yeah, there yeah. there might be there's some data there that, that suggests that. Well, um, because and, because obviously kids are safer in school. And and you're right about kids being safe in school. That was actually a topic I spoke with a, um, a community group on Wednesday, uh, all about school safety. And and the reality is, and so I'm going to dovetail right in with that, Dr. Gase, that the research is still very clear that schools to your point, are actually a very safe place to be, by and large. Um, so it's something for us to look at. Um, but in, in the meantime, we, we are going to work on safety as well. And it, we can call it, maybe, maybe it is antiquated. I don't know. Uh, that'd be interesting. I agree with you to look at data on that. I'm not aware of any. Uh, so school superintendents, we kind of get together as well, and we talk, and we try not to be 
on an island too much about those decisions. So you're going to notice that some of the districts in, in our county completely shut down today, and there were a number of us that were open and didn't delay at all. Um, so I think, I, I think we want to make certain that parents do understand that if we are saying we aren't coming to school, that it is our determination that it is not what's safe for students. Now, parents are always going to make their own decisions for their child. Um, but no, I agree with you, Dr. Gates. That's interesting data, and I'm not certain if it exists, but you're right. Maybe Highway Patrol could help with something like that. And just a friendly reminder, one that I needed to remember this morning myself was to be sure that you're taking care of your sidewalks because our students are walking on those early in the mornings and those are our responsibilities. And, and so I need to be sure that I was out there salting this morning as well. Well, and I think it's also a moment and I've got a, I've got a soon to be legal driver. We're still working on those 50 hours. Uh, but I think it's also important that parents also talk to their own kids about, hey, if it's, if it's snowing outside, you might need to leave a little bit earlier than what you normally do uh, to provide a, a safe arrival time to account for other driving conditions. Um, I think we as adults know that if it's snowing outside, we got to go, all right, we need to leave a little bit early. We need to make certain that we tell our students those same protocols and practices as well. Um, because like, for example, today, it was a little slick, but it wasn't anything, as long as you had a, a modicum of, of awareness students obviously were able to arrive safely, at least in, in Tiffin City Schools. And that may not have been the same weather condition and road conditions everywhere, and I understand that. Um, but I think we also have to work as parents as well to make sure we, we teach our kids the proper protocols and, and driving instincts when it comes to that. Thank you. This brings us to item five, opportunity for the public to address the board. Um, each person addressing the board shall give their name and address. If there are multiples of people who wish to speak, each person is allotted three minutes until the total time of 30 minutes is used. Are there any individuals who would like to address the board? Seeing none, that'll bring us to the consent agenda. So the con consent agenda items are 6.01, approve the minutes from December special and regular and January organizational board meeting. 6.2, approve the, tre approve the treasurer's reports for December. 6.3, employment. 6.4, donations and grants. Thank you to each of those. 6.5, certificate of fiscal officer. 6.6, .6, stipends. And I believe that is all. I would entertain a motion to approve. For the next one. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Just to be able to note, um, if you look at 606 on stipends, teacher candidate mentors, these are teachers that have hosted a student teacher um, mm -hmm. in their room, and the different universities pay different amounts. Um, when it's all said and done, by the way, I think this number is, Mrs. Perry, this is before taxes or is after? It's before the teacher's taxes. It's yes. So, so for our teachers, in some cases that host a student teacher, they get for an for entire semester, they get $43. So if anybody's sitting there thinking that our teachers are just raking in the money whenever they have a student teacher and it's a lot easier, they get a grand total of $43. And that, that's not a, a little bit of work. A lot of people are like, oh, yes. well, now they have a student teacher who's doing all of that work. Having gone through that process, it's a lot. It's a lot. Of, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of investment. And there's a lot of trust needed and a lot of development. So thank you to each of them. Yes. That, that almost seems like an insult. Yes. You know, I mean, that's like, <laughs> like leaving a penny tip, you know. And the and the the rules and I I don't I'm not as up on these as I used to be but the rules have changed so it used to be you could get free college courses yes. you could get much larger stipends and they have been cut down and cut down and cut down and I know with um, same with counseling so counseling we can no longer offer those so there's rules and regulations and they keep getting less and less I I didn't even know that the there were still places that could give stipends yes so. I just, if anybody is sitting there, I thought it was also a good learning opportunity for not just the board, but our entire community. Uh, when people say, well, they've got a student teacher, they've got it easy, and they're making money off of this. Um, no, not really. And Dr. Gase, I would, I think that the intent is to show that it is appreciated. Uh, however, your point would probably be somewhat echoed by it, even a few of those teachers. Yeah, it's almost like, like when I volunteer time to, to, to educate, 
maybe a, they give you a, like a pin of the university or they give you a token, right? And that probably has more meaning than, you know, $43, you know, or maybe a-, a Before taxes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And even even the paperwork, the amount of time it takes, like yeah, the, I mean, but, the, the $43 before taxes doesn't even cover the time it takes to do the, right. the paperwork. Well, and, and anybody that teaches, um, whether you're teaching students or graduate students or whatever level students, it, it's not easy, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, if you take your job seriously, which I think all of our teachers do. Correct. Uh, I would just point out that, you know, some of us went to college and had a paid tuition to do an externship where we worked for free. Yeah. So that's, I mean, it's, it's not fair, but I think that's how they get their experience, too. I mean, we have to, I mean, that's ways to improve the system. In terms of the consent agenda, though, I would just like, and every month we do this, we just, you know, approve the donations and grants. I mean, this this month they're kind of neat again, and you know, a hundred dollars for um, the library, seventy five dollars for drums, and then we have Burns giving us for our two sports programs and the Tiffin Lions. I mean, is there any way we can somewhere recognize this on our website that that people mm -hmm. do this? I mean, it, it's all over, and every yeah. month it's always individuals and just community members. So. I think we could probably send this out on social media pretty easily. Yeah, absolutely, and they're they're neat. Like what Mr. Perez said, like it, it's these are these are individuals and businesses who who put these forth, and they they don't have to. Um, and just seeing how they span and like the ways that they help, I think would be great to highlight. Thank you, yeah. Mr. Perez. Yeah, because I ran into someone who donated the drums that we have for band, the the actual drums, not the, and uh, they wanted to know how they were, and if kids and I, yeah, I just saw them in the show. They're back there, and they described them. So I, I think people are attached to our schools. So. Any further discussion? Mrs. Perry? Mr. Williams? Yes. Dr. Gase? Yes. Mr. Kisabeth? Yes. Mr. Perez? Yes. Dr. McBride? Yes. This brings us to action item 7.01, approve NCO ESC to conduct the treasurer search and entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? Just a reminder for everybody, the board is obviously fully aware of this, but for the public as well, that the NCO ESC is doing the search at no charge to the district, I think is probably important for our community to know. Thank you. I'd also like to point out that the a it was nice reading the AT and seeing the headline with our treasure, but I think it kind of implied that she didn't earn her well-earned retirement. So she's still here finishing her year and she retired. So I think. Justin, did you have a thought? Yeah, just a, a note for anybody listening in, right? We we did talk to more than just the uh, NCO ESC. We did talk to, well, uh, NCO ESC, uh, OSBA, OSBA, and then we and, also brought in a, a resource group that yeah. can help with the supervision and the, the guidance process. After yeah, so that. that's, you know, that's not visible. That was in the executive session. So we did evaluate multiple options here. So thank you. Any other discussion? Mrs. Perry. Mr. Kizabeth. Yes. Dr. Gase? Yes. Mr. Perez? Yes. Mr. Williams? Yes. Dr. McBride? Yes. 7.02, approve the Title I letter of understanding. Entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Second. This is a shared funding agreement that we have to do almost every year. Thank you. Any discussion or questions? Mrs. Perry? Mr. Perez? No. Mr. Williams? Ye Dr. Yes. Dr. Gase? Yes. Mr. Kisabeth? Yes. Dr. McBride? Yes. 7.03, approve the SLP service coverage agreement. So moved. Thank you. Second. Thank you. This is to be able to provide services for an SLP that we have out and to be able to make sure we have coverage for this SLP while they are out. Thank you. Any questions or discussion? Mrs. Perry? Dr. Gase? Yes. Mr. Kisabeth? Yes. Mr. Perez? Yes, but Mr. Mr. Richards, can you explain what SLP is? For Speech language pathologist, I apologize. Thank you, Mr. Perez. Mr. Williams? Yes. Dr. McBride? Yes. 7.04, adopt resolution to restate OASBO's 457 plan. Maintain a motion to approve? So moved. Second. And on this one, I will defer to Mrs. Perry. 
So the 457 plan is one of our deferred compensation plans, um, much like a 401k in the private world. Um, and during the pandemic, there were additional federal mandates. So those were added to our plan. Um, at that time, our sponsor, OASBO, um, did not think since those were mandates that they needed to be voted on by the board. But according to the IRS 457 section, they do need to be officially authorized by you. So this is a retroactive approval. Thank you. For a federal mandate. Any questions or discussion? Mrs. Perry. Mr. Williams. Yes. Dr. Gase. Yes. Mr. Kizabeth. Yes. Mr. Perez. Yes. Dr. McBride. Yes. 7.05, adopt the social media guidelines for school board members. This had previously been tabled until it had been looked over by legal, I believe. Still uh, moved. <laughs> thanks, Mr. Kizab. Entertain a second. I'll second it for discussion. Yeah. So I was asked to get le have legal weigh in on that policy. Uh, legal seemed to indicate there's, there's not going to be in any issue because it's a guideline. So there is no violation that they would be worried about on a constitutionality basis. And then for Mr. Williams, you're the drafter of this, correct? Or uh, the policy committee drafted it. Yes. The, policy committee. the question I have on the last part, it says that post member board members will not post something on there before the district. That's not meant to like, we can't post like race results or sports results or something before the district does, right? No, I think it's meant to cover like news releases or press releases, right? Okay. That those are the district's news to release, not the not the boards, right? So I think we would be in a position to uh, share them or forward them depending on whatever platform you're using, but it's it's not ours as individuals news to release. It is the news of the 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 district. And thank you for the explanation. I also we have a web an email address for people to comment to the board and we don't as individuals respond to that but i want to assure the assure the community who are listening in that when we do get those emails they are sent to the proper person to be addressed and i hope that in doing that those people are contacted to let them know that yeah we did receive your email and so the way those have typically operated is those are typically things that should be directed towards the superintendent or from um, him to somebody else. And so each of those emails prompts a conversation. So the, for individuals to be aware, usually when we get those emails, it's a quick call or, or text to Mr. Richards. Are you handling this? What's your timeline to return this? And his general goal, want, uh, based on our conversations, is 24 hours. He gets back to Correct. Them. But it does put an awareness on all of the board so that we're all aware of the issue. It allows us to follow up. But usually those aren't our things to navigate, but it does prompt that conversation. And they generally start with the president Correct. speaking with the superintendent. Correct. Okay. Um, any other discussion or questions? Mrs. Perry? Mr. Kizabeth? Yes. Mr. Perez? Yes. Dr. Case? Yes. Mr. Williams? Yes. Dr. McBride? Yes. 7.06, approve Applewood Center's agreement for special education services. I will be abstaining. Thank you. So moved. Second. This is to provide education supports for a student. Any other discussion or questions? Mrs. Perry? Dr. Gase? Yes. Mr. Williams? Yes. Mr. Kizabeth? Yes. Mr. Perez? Abstain. Dr. McBride? Yes. 7.07, 7. so this is to approve job descriptions, um, there are numerous of them. I'll entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Thank you. Second. Uh, this is, I believe Mr. Perez said it well, uh, making certain that we try to get the, and actually Mr. Kisabeth as well, trying to get the right people on the right seats on the bus. Um, some of these are just gonna be change in titles only. Uh, for example, Chief Operations Officer, uh, I'm pretty sure uh, Mr. Bose is hoping that he is chosen for that because otherwise he will be without a job. So uh, <laughs> I'm pretty certain that he's got a pretty good shot at that one, um, but we'll see. Uh, <laughs> the jury's still out. Uh, no, I, I feel pretty good about that. Some of this is retitling people, and yet again, all of it is to make certain that we have some better accountability within our organization, that we have some better understandings about who's responsible for what. Um, 
the reality is if we think something's important and it's no one's responsibility to see that it gets done, the reality is then it probably is not getting done. Um, and we've had a few instances of that. So this is hopefully going to create, it, not hopefully, it better, uh, create a lot more organizational accountability so that we can know who to go to and add a clarity for everybody within our organization and the community about who to go to uh, for different issues. Thank you. Could you uh, elaborate on which of these would be opened up for, for applicants versus which ones are simply yeah. the assignment of title? Um, the, the chief officers there, there's four of them at the very up front. Those, those are already done um, with people that we have in place. Uh, almost everything else will be opened up. Um, the TOSA for district literacy, uh, special education coordinator and district literacy, that's already filled with a person that we have in place. Um, coordinator of tech support um, is already somebody that we have in place and whole child director is what we're looking at bringing Jill Miller into Tiffin City Schools uh, to be on board but all other positions would be opened up but I think we have to be realistic you redefine things people may decide they don't like the new duties correct and may make other decisions but I do like in reading the new do job descriptions and it makes it clear who is responsible for who, who answers to who. And so yes. it, you know, again, holds you accountable. So Yeah. And then that gives you guys the opportunity to hold me accountable for it as well. And I think that's the way the organization is supposed to run. Um, you just have two people that you have to hold accountable. Um, I have, in this model, I have four people, and those four people have other people that they hold accountable um, as we move forward. Well, one of the things that was really cleaned up in the reorganization plan is that chain of command and who is responsible for who, but also who supports with yes. individuals. Because that is one of the pieces we've heard regularly is, I don't know who, from within the district, I don't know who to go to, I don't know who covers this, I don't know who my supervisor is. And so really, not just who to hold accountable, but who the supports are for the various individuals in the district. And, and for example, uh, probably the one feedback that I get that's of concerning nature that people are concerned about, and I, I will publicly uh, applaud him uh, for it, which is difficult for me to do because he's a Michigan fan and he's sitting behind me. Uh, but people sit there and go, we're, we're worried that, you know, is Mr. Nadeau going to be okay with all of this? Um, and I think if you talk to Mr. Nadeau, because of, he's doing just special education right now, and he, people are looking at this going, are, is he going to have enough support to do this? Uh, if you talk to him, he'd tell you he's excited for next year. He can't wait to get to next year because we both believe we will have more support uh, for our students and for our teachers and our kids, um, and more supports even for special education. Even without a title of special education director, we actually believe we will have more supports for all, all students and all learners through this. So I appreciate people not wanting to run him out of town um, and wanting him to stay. If I could change his allegiance of a football team, that would do a lot better for me. Um, he has said that's not happening. Uh, and yes, you've beaten Ohio State two years in a row, so congratulations. But uh, we are, I, we are, I think, providing more supports for for our students and more clarity. I think that's something important you pointed out that the title doesn't include special education because I think philosophically you indicated it's education. That's what we deliver education, regardless of your condition or status. Correct. Correct. Any other questions or discussion, Mrs. Perry? Dr. Gase? Yes. Mr. Williams? Yes. Mr. Kizabeth? Yes, and I want to thank Mr. Richards for putting this together. Mr. Perez? Dr. McBride? Yes. At this point, this brings us to board discussion. Are there any items that the board would like to discuss? At this time, if I may, Madam President, I'd like to just highlight some of the things that I've seen. I think Mr. Kizabeth does it as well. Um, first of all, I would like to thank again TU for hosting the STEM fair. I was uh, lucky to have a break between court to see that and to see the remarkable work of our students. And we actually had high school and middle school participants. Mr. Bose was there. Um, the topics that we had, one of my favorite was, is math anxiety real? And I think that was, um, the student's name is Pungyan. I know her last name. And uh, I can't remember what her partners, actually I have it on here because they did well. but. I think I told them that I would read the results. High school participants, first place were Ava Newman and Madeline Hardina, second place Carmen Lewis and Erica Raun 
Brobenol. Is that how you pronounce it? Brobenol. Okay, and the middle school participants individual. First place, Braxton Road. Second place, Leah Wall. Third place, Ann Young. Fourth place, Leah Wenger. Fifth place, Austin Link. The team competition, and it really wasn't competition, it was just good work there. First place, Angela Liu and Lily Perez. Second place, Maddie Kelly and Kayla McKinnon. Third place, Emma Hickman and Samantha Huffman. Fourth place, Sophia Lee and Caroline Lewis. Fifth place, Grace Pungent and Corinne Potts. And they're the ones that did the Is Math Anxiety Real? Lots of nice topics. There was one on cereal. That was my favorite cereal ontology. Which one is more healthy for you? Um, one on name brands versus, um, uh, what would you call them, generic or whatever, knockoffs. I won't say that. And which one was better? Um, Hook's Law, Styrofoam Replacements. A Rubik's Cube alternative. Um, what else was there? There were some other neat theories. One who tested what would bounce higher, something that was, you know, more bound tighter and it, or something that was looser. It was just, I think they were very creative in their STEM projects. And so all around, I was impressed with everything they did there. And they had to do that, their studies and publish their reports. And it was very well done. And then I think in terms of other things that we had, band had its solo and ensemble and choir as well with 11 superior and six excellent ratings. Um, TIFF and varsity cheer first in their traditional and game day routines and they're going on to regionals. I believe it's this weekend, so good luck to them. Quiz Bowl, I think finished, can't read my own writing, but I think it was fourth or third. And then Noble's budding genius program on our website. They were for Martin Luther King Day doing a public service at the sharing kitchen. And then our swim team that nobody really knows about, I mentioned them at the last meeting that I find out about them. Um, they already had their SBCs and I believe they placed third, but they had uh, an all SBC team that included Kinsey Slosser, Trenton Stave, Olivia Steinmetz, Braden Stave, Addison Fortney and Mitchell Scheiber, some of them who are swimming for the first time. And so I think they've also said like cross country, they're small, but they're mighty as well. And there's a lot more stuff that we're doing and trying to stay involved in it, but just all the good things that our students do. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Perez. Any other pieces for board discussion? Wonderful. So this brings us to um, the ninth item on our agenda. We are going to enter an executive session to consider the purchase or sale of public property. Uh, if the public interest, yep, yeah, so to Consider the purchase or sale of public property. Um, entertain a motion. So moved. Second. And there is no action to follow. Um, Mrs. Perry. Mr. Williams. Yes. Mr. Kizabeth. Yes. Dr. Gase. Yes. Mr. Perez. Yes, ma'am. Dr. McBride. Yes. Um, so thank all. Thank you to all who attended. Our next meeting will be February 21st at 6.30 p.m. here.